we live? I have no idea. Are we live? Well, not live, but are we recording? I believe we are. We're five seconds in. Hello, welcome back to Reviewing Things, episode 16. <laughs> As I said when I did a, did a review for The Giggle, um, this is probably the most reviewing things I've done in, in quite a while. Um, just because I have a little bit more time and I've and I've tried to make an effort to watch more new stuff. Um, so yeah, today is the next in line of the Doctor Who specials. This being the Christmas, I don't think it was called the Christmas special in America, but here in England, in the UK where I'm from, um, yes, it was the Christmas special of Doctor Who. And you can see in the background here, we have the 15th Doctor, Shuti Gatwa. And the special was the church on Ruby Road. And uh, how did he do in his first run out? And to be honest, like just a bit of background, like I didn't realize there was going to be a Christmas special for Doctor Who until um, just before the giggle came out. I was like, oh, yeah, there's a there's a Christmas special. I didn't realize there was a Christmas special. I think I heard some of the some of the um, creators like Nerd Rotic and Hill versus Babyface mention it before. Um, I, I realized so I was like oh there's a Christmas special they don't normally do that they don't normally rush in a Christmas special right now or this early in a in a doctor's run in the in with Capaldi and with Whitaker as well they they I think they did a series first and then they did Christmas specials or in the case of Whitaker they did a New Year's special so I did say after the giggle that I would give uh this this episode a chance i probably still will at least watch the first ep first episode of um season 13 uh which starts in may of 2024 so i definitely well i say definitely but there is a chance that i will at least give that a go but what can i say uh about this this episode so i went into it quite kind of with a blank slate I kind of thought to myself, it's a new doctor now. Let's see how, how we get on. Contrary to a lot of sort of popular opinion, I didn't necessarily think that... I thought the giggle was bad in places, but I didn't think it was as, as bad. I don't think it was as boring as Wild well, Blue Yonder, and I don't think it was absolutely horrific and absolutely... I can't even think of a negative connotation to give it, but yeah, painstakingly bad as the Star Beast was. I thought it was... I thought it was okay in places, you know. Um, going back and watching it again, I've seen that you know there's a lot of there's a lot. As I said, the bi generation was a shit idea. I think it, it it doesn't work. Like there was nothing wrong with regeneration. There was nothing offensive about regeneration as a concept. So I don't know why they had to change it. You know, there's a lot of as I said in the review of the giggle. There's a lot of sort of. <sighs> And I mean this in the in the best possible way. There's a lot of homo homoeroticism that takes place. Like I didn't actually realize that they bi generate from the penis, <laughs> from the crotch area. Um, David Tennant and Shuti Gatwa. But I thought from you know um, Gatwa's first few minutes on screen, I thought he was he was perfectly fine. Like I didn't necessarily think that he was bad. Um, I did I didn't like the sort of queer as folk RuPaul's Drag Race um ness of him necessarily because that's not that's not really the doctor um but you know i kind of thought to myself i think i said in the review of the giggle i thought to myself well they all bring every actor that's played the doctor has brought them a part of themselves into it so maybe this is just what how the 15th doctor um acts you know um but yeah with this one I, as i said i went into it with a blank slate, I thought to myself, well, I'm not going to go into it thinking it's going to be bad before I've even seen it. I'm, I'm just going to take, take it each, each as each way as it comes basically. So Christmas day evening, I didn't watch it live because I'm not going to, um, torture myself <laughs> making time for this. Uh, and I sat down to watch the church on Ruby Road. Uh, I wasn't very thrilled with the trailer. I mean, I was trying to give it the benefit of the doubt, but I thought uh, it's not very Doctor Who-ish. Um, uh, but I thought, yeah, I'll give it a go. And the best I can say about it is that it was disappointingly average. I tried to be optimistic. As I say, I tried to, tried to go into it 
with a blank slate. It was very similar to the giggle, if not slightly worse than the giggle. It was like enjoyable in places, but it wasn't necessarily like amazing compared to other Doctor Who Christmas specials that I've, that we've we've all seen in the past, like the Christmas Invasion. I know a lot of people take the piss out of that now, but compared to that, like this was may just may as well just be a kind of early season episode or something like that. Um, the I'd probably say it's on the same level as like Return of Doctor Mysterio, you know, kind of forgettable. Um in terms of what happens so the episode starts with the with the doctor coming out of the tardis having they're, they're telling the story of how the new companion ruby sunday was born as an orphan and all this kind of stuff and uh then we cut to davina mccall for some reason uh hosting what my, what which i can only describe as a um as uh, we have a have a program in the UK called Long Lost Family. I don't know if it if it's been sold to other parts of the world, but um, it's basically about like people that find their birth parents or their their brother and sister their their but their um, biological brother and sister or something like that. And um, so it's basically uh, Ruby. We're introduced to Ruby who for some reason is in is acting incredibly northern and throwing every northern northern english colloquialism into her dialogue um and she's being interviewed for this family show which isn't lost long lost family because here in the uk long lost family is shown on itv and obviously doctor who is on the bbc in the uk so they obviously can't say that it's that but it's clearly that um and she, they they say they're going to so davina says oh we're going to go and find we're going to go and try and find your birth mother and uh in that time things start going wrong well little like things start going wrong like the sound guys are going oh i can i can hear whis whispering on the tracks and all this kind of stuff somebody i saw said that all the all the people in the room all the men in the room seemed very like hipstery and i didn't really no notice that to be honest i may have to go back and watch it again and see if that's that's true um and then we cut to uh, a bar where Ruby is playing playing a keyboard in a band, which is um, the lead singer is. <laughs> uh, I think let's move on from that. The lead singer is. You, you just you uh, those who know know what I'm going to say, but because I'm early in this kind of in the grand scheme of things in this YouTube world, I'm not going to sit here and say what I, th I'm not going to say, I'm not ready to, I'm not confident enough to say what I think, but anyway, but it's fine, whatever. Um, and, uh, oh no, I've, I've missed a bit, haven't I? So before that, it cuts to a club where you, you see it in the trailer for the Christmas special. The doctor is, uh, spinning around in a, in a kilt and a very, very tight singlet. And I'm thinking, well, I get that, you know, creative decisions need to be made and sometimes we need to change things. But regardless of the whatever you think of Jodie Whittaker, like there were times where she did act like act like the doctor. Maybe not as much, not as well as Peter Capaldi, maybe not as well as Tom Baker, but she still there were times where she still did things like the doctor something like this of shooty gatwa basically i'm gonna oh, fuck it i'm gonna say it prancing about was uh was not something the doctor normally does and i know what all of the people that you know have said have given this i'll talk about that later but these people that have given the episode like glorious reviews and all this kind of stuff will say that yeah, you just don't like the fact that like there's there's you know this this stuff on show and it's like well because it's a complete it's a complete change to what the character is at the end of the day um so yeah so he's there dancing and ruby's watching him dancing and uh then the you see this little hand by her drink try and move like move it away from her or pull it push it off the off the um off the bar table 
and the doctor catches it and you know it's that that i have to admit was very very doctory it was very like it sort of reminded me of a, of a shitter version of um oh what's the first episode of season four called i'm gonna have to look it up now sorry bear with me but yeah i could never i could never remember i can never i can only remember some episode names i can never remember remember all of them Oh, partners in crime i should have known that but yeah partners in crime it sort of reminded me of a sort of rip off of that not a, a, a not as good rip off of that um where it's a sort of chance meeting and it seems like the doctors in the in the case of partners in crime the 10 and donna are sort of like just missing each other and they end up stumbling across across the same thing that they're they're uh, researching or they're trying to find out but in this case it's the doctor following ruby because all of this bad luck is following her and um then we get you know an in a, a, a kind of glimpse of the doctor's first interaction with another per with a with, you know with another person for more than 30 seconds um ruby and her friends including the um uh leave and uh they're they're leaving they're leaving the bar or leaving somewhere they get in a ca taxi and these little then something happens where there's a big inflatable snowman above them and whatever's causing the bad luck happens and they release this the snowman and the snowman starts falling and uh the the doctor uses his sonic screwdriver that doesn't look like a screwdriver it looks more like a remote control um to make the lights turn green ruby and her friends drive off in the cab and uh the doctor gets snowmanned as he put it so they get away and then you see him interact and i think to be honest i mean i i, I was watching uh the real bbc on uh with as from hill versus babyface and he had like nerd rotic and mauler on there and they were very they they described shooty gatwa's performance of the doctor as embarrassing and i thought well and let i i feel like they're kind of saying that for clicks because i didn't think it was embarrassing i didn't think it was comparing to other doctors that they've been actors that have played the doctor previously uh i would i would say i'd say it's i i wouldn't go as far as to say that it's just as bad as jody but i would say that it's it's slightly better than jody but I felt like it was, again, it felt like they, that he just watched to research the part. He just watched David Tennant and gone, oh, I'll just do that. Um, but, they, but, you know, I, I think he'll be fine. I think, I think he'll be fine overall. Um, you know, I think he sort of gets it. It feels like he sort of gets it and he knew what to, he knew what to do, but there were things that you were like oh the doctor doesn't do that doesn't do things like that you know using word words like babes and things like that and like no the doctor doesn't do that. as far as i'm like from i've been watching doctor who for years like the doctor has never once said that um it just felt like a very sort of gen z gen alpha type of type of perform like performance um so you then realize that well you then realize that the foster mother of of ruby is actually valerie from afterlife um and uh you realize that th this woman has been adopted like fostering children for many many years she's had 33 kids all this kind of stuff you then um then there's this whole thing around and then you realize that there's these little monsters that basically reminded me of the underpants gnomes from so that's what i'm going to call them the underpants gnomes from um from south park um they they so prior to that ruby's foster mother gets a a baby given to her to foster that's called lulu bell and when they and i i i don't know like maybe i'm just being con conspiratorial but when they were saying when they said that i thought why are they taking the piss out of the name that sounds a little bit like queen elizabeth's nickname queen elizabeth ii or recently her majesty her majesty queen elizabeth ii 
And I was like, why are they taking the piss out of that name? And then I was like, yeah, they. I know that like Harry and Meghan called their daughter Lilibet or something like that. So I'd be like, but they, but these guys support Harry and Meghan. Why are they taking the piss out of the name? It, I know it's it's not the same name, but it sounds quite similar. But anyway, so um, the goblins, the 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 underpants gnomes, um, kidnap uh, the baby. And then there's a scene where Ruby chases them out of the out of the window. And as she has a chance to do something, she decides to go all Coronation Street or wherever, where, whichever fucking program she's from. I don't watch them. Um, and starts going, are you hissing at me? Are you? And it's like, what are you doing? Like a real human being wouldn't do that. Like, first of all, you'd be shocked. If I, let's say, for example, I open this door next to me here and all of a sudden there was just like a little imp underpants gnomes standing there the the first thing i wouldn't do is say what the fuck are you doing there i shit myself because i've never seen anything like that it's like these people have never read hp lovecraft like you're meant to be scared when you see something like that for the first time so anyway she decides to to chase after them she goes on the the wooden ladder that's hanging from somewhere uh, it's not revealed and then you know as she's she's kind of gripping on for dear life um the doctor appears and uh this is the kind of chance meeting between or the the first the first proper meeting between uh ruby and this this incarnation of the doctor and um yeah and then it kind of leads to the usual thing of i'm the doctor what's your name ruby blah blah, blah. I thought he did that okay. I thought that was believable. I was like, yeah, that's the kind of thing that the doctor would do. I didn't understand the whole thing about the gravity gloves. Um, it didn't really make make much sense to me, but it is what it is. Um, they get on the they get on the on the blimp, <clears throat> which looks like something from Siberia. Well, yeah, Siberia, the game, which I'm actually putting out on playing things at the moment. Um, so they yeah they do that and then um th then there's a song <laughs> which which uh was fucking cheesy it was cheesy as fuck it was so so bad it was insane and the the, the underpants gnomes they sing a song but not as good as you know time to go to work rock all night that that they don't sing that they just sing some sort of thing that i could never imagine goblins as they're actually called i could never imagine goblins singing like that or goblins i've the the when i think of goblin singing i think of it i don't know if anyone's ever played the the game the bard's tale but that's what what, what how do they sing oh it's bad luck to be you that that's that's what i imagine when i think of goblin singing not singing like bloody fucking taylor swift or whatever so then you're introduced to the goblin king which basically looks like a massive bloat like massive piranha it doesn't look like a goblin like that it's just shit really bad cgi and uh the doctor and ruby managed to get in there uh because the doctor's able to read the rope that's tying the ship together and then they burst into song which again isn't very doctory i have never seen the doctor burst it burst into song you know even jody whittaker never did anything like that so i don't i don't know what direction they're going down with this it just feels very jazz hands it feels very very that for some reason i don't know whether russell t davis has just really embraced this kind of intersectional work virus but yeah it does seem like it's going down that road of becoming hyper gay essentially hyper homo erotic essentially um or es es essentially that so they get the baby back and uh this is the yeah, so this this I, ca I can't actually remember what happens at this point because there's there's a bit where they're having a discussion and again the timeless children is is referenced and it's kind of you know hammered home that yes the doctor is now an orphan and isn't actually a time lord and isn't actually from gallifrey which completely destroys the whole uh origin of the doctor um because you know up until chris chibnall decided to have a brain aneurysm um the doctor was basically william hartnell running away from gallifrey because he was scared or whatever 
And this is they, they, if they thought that this was better, having it, having it be just a child that fell out of the sky, a female child that fell out of the sky, it's not. It's not. It's not any better. Well, yeah, we can improve on that. But the, the, the thing is, the doctor's meant to be mysterious. Like we're not meant to know anything about him. Like it's almost like the Joker from Batman. We don't really know what the Joker's origin is. There's 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 um theories and obviously you had it in like the 1989 film and the killing joke and things like that but really and truthfully no one knows what the joker is no one knows where the joker came from and that's kind of what it is with the doctor like you're not meant to really know where he came from as the, in the tom baker era he just he always used to say i'm just a traveler he just used to say i'm i'm just passing through he just used to say things like that um <clears throat> so yeah so so that's been, re been re reaffirmed that uh, he was a little black baby that fell out of the sky, female black baby that fell out of the sky and was experimented on and regenerated loads of times. And William Hartnell isn't actually the first doctor. As I said, I had a feeling that eventually Shuti Gatwa will be considered uh, considered the first doctor of New Who 2.0 or something like that, or New Who 2 or something like that. Um, Yeah, there's a scene where like Davina, Davina McCall gets killed by a Christmas tree, which again, pointless, like it's not really any much point in that being there. Um, uh, and yeah, then you find out that the God, the underpants gnomes have um, changed time so that Ruby has been taken instead of this new baby. And that means history's changed. And then you see that the foster mother is now saying that oh she just does it for money she hates children she just does it because it's 800 quid a child a, a, a 800 quid a pop and all this kind of stuff and um i didn't see any point of that that was that just felt like really bad pacing for me like i don't i didn't understand the kind of uh the under, understand the relevance of it um so the doctor goes back in time to when ruby's birth mother um find uh puts puts the baby back on the the church at ruby road and um he manages to destroy destroy the ship um manages to marry up the timeline so uh ruby is picked up when she's supposed to be and yeah and then that is basically yeah oh yeah before that davina rang the way before that, Davina McCall rings Ruby and says, we can't find any DNA of your mother, which, uh, you know, that's probably going to come up in the in the in the next series or so, something like that. Um, and then. We're introduced to the TARDIS, which, again, they, they, they just I don't know, like you, when you change something, you don't need to tr drastically change everything. Like sometimes things just work. They got rid of the kind of flabbergastness of the TARDIS you know when a companion goes in there for the first time they can't believe what they're seeing you know i think rose in in the eccleston uh period in the when when the revival started burst into tears when she went into the tardis for the first time with ruby she was just like who are you and then he's like i'm the doctor and he's said that about four times throughout the the entire program and then also there's an in, there's there's uh mrs flood who's a neighbor that we we have a little mid credit scene with at the end. And I thought, well, what's the relevance of that? Or maybe she's Ruby's mother or she's the Rani or something like that. Um, she was played by Anita Dobson, which I didn't realize. And Anita Dobson was uh, probably most famous for being in a soap opera in the UK called EastEnders. Um, and she was most famous for being part of a Christmas Day scene where where her and her on-screen husband played by Leslie Grantham uh Dirty Den she was famous for you know lying that she had cancer and then he divorced her on he, he asked for a divorce on Christmas Day and that was like a really big moment it's before my time it was like the mid 80s I was born late 80s um so yeah, then that's the end of the episode. I probably skipped a load of bits because, as I said, a lot of it is kind of mildly forgettable. Um, it wasn't, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be like ho hi like really, really hyper woke, like all that kind of stuff. But I think with the story, they probably couldn't do that as much. I just thought it was 
distinctly average, or as I've put in the title, disappointingly average. Um, you know, I, I thought, shoot, as I said, I thought shooting out while I was fine. I think he'll be okay as the doctor. I don't think he'll, I think he'll be better than Jody. I don't necessarily think he's going to be better than um, Peter Capaldi. Um, at the moment, no, he's, he's probably, he's probably just as good as Tennant was in this second run. Um, I don't think he, he will, he will rise to the level. I mean, to some people he might do, but I don't think he's going to rise to the level of Tennant Smith and Eccleston, um, you know, nine, 10 and 11. I don't think he'll do that, but you know, there were moments where I was like, oh, I can see, I can see what he's doing there, or I can see how he's been directed and that kind of stuff. Like there was a few doctory things that he did, but more often than not, there wasn't. And I didn't feel like he was it, it just it just didn't feel like he was acting like the doctor at some points. Like the the bits at the beginning that I talked about, the singing was very off off key from what I have seen over the doc of the doctor over the, over the many years. But I but I sort of give the benefit of the doubt because you know they're the each personality is different. But the one thing I I know is that there wasn't this kind of stuff prior to that. You know, even going back from Paul McGann to William Hartnell, there wasn't, you know, singing and dancing and prancing about. Um, it's just it's just strange. It, that, that's all I'm saying. It's just it's just a bit weird for to change the character that drastically. Um, I did see I was going to mention that I did see a lot of uh, reviews in places like The Guardian. The Guardian gave it five stars. Obviously, they gave it five stars. Um, it's... It, <sighs> that they they're, they're basically doing what they did when they reviewed fifa 23 uh two years ago they basically gave it a five a four star review because it's got more female football uh, female football teams in it now that's from what i read when i read the article that was their main thing for giving it four stars oh we've got more women in it now yeah what about the actual game why are we talking about things that don't matter what about the actual game is the game good does the game play well why are we bumping up scores because of intersectionality points so that's probably why they decided to um to to do to 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 give it five stars i didn't read the article but i just kind of assumed that was the case ruby sunday millie gibson i don't know she uh, okay i suppose but yeah, I have a feeling they're going to try and make her like a cross between Clara and Rose, and that's not going to go down well with fans, to be honest. Um, yeah, I felt like she was she was too, she acted too much like a soap 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 character, basically. Um, and as I said, everyone else was kind of forgettable or a stereotype of some sort. Um, well, not a stereotype, but just kind of obvious, you know lefty utopianist that's basically what they they most of them came off that okay most of the characters in it came off came off as um i also saw the sort of teaser trailer for season four there wasn't anything really that that's that sprung out to me as like it looks bad um and as i said i'll at least give the first episode a go um but yeah i think doctor who is past it now unfortunately I'm not going to jump on the bandwagon and say things like RIP Doctor Who and all this kind of stuff, but I am starting to think that I think it's run its course and people aren't going to like what they're doing with this. They're they're not going to they're not going to enjoy. I don't think I don't think a lot of the the kind of hardcore fans like myself will enjoy, you know, the way that they're sort of taking it down this sort of metrosexual route or this kind of like over the topness that we're getting at the moment. And um, yeah, it's worrying. It's another it's another franchise that they've decided to inject with this virus, and it is a virus. <laughs> it's for some reason it's Jordan Peterson calls it, you know, false compassion, and that's what it is. It's this kind of utopianist idea that we need to have as many different sorts of people and different things. We need to we need to have. We need to reflect ourselves in our art and all this kind of stuff. And this, that's not how art works. Artists use lies to tell that you use lies to tell the truth. We don't use truth to tell lies. So 
yeah, I, I just feel like for some reason, and and it, and it, and what I mainly have a problem with is it's that detriment to to good storytelling. When you're trying to meet quotas, you're not telling a good story. You're just going, look what we've got, look what we've got, and and then all the story becomes about is that thing. You know, when you've got people that like care about that type of stuff, that's all they're going to write in there. They're just going to write, oh, this is this is what this is. I'm I'm reflecting myself, and it's like. Well, how narcissistic can you be? Like, have some imagination for fuck's sake. But yeah, as I say, overall, different, disappointingly average. Um, I was expecting a lot more, but you know, if I'm the most I can say is that it was probably, it's probably as forgettable as like the return of the return of Doctor Mysterio, um, because I don't remember any of that at all. Or the husbands of River Song, which I don't remember very much at all. I'm planning on going back and watching them all up to twice upon a time anyway. So um, we'll see how that goes. But yeah, I'd probably give it like a five out of ten, four and a half, maybe. Um, I don't really do ratings, but I'm just trying to fill time. <laughs> um, yeah, is what it is. As I say, I'm sure Shooty will be fine as the doctor. I'm sure he'll have good moments and bad moments. Um, but overall, you know, I'm not very excited for the season coming up. Um, I wouldn't go as far as to say that like I'm done completely, but I don't I don't have high hopes, you know, after um, the kind of shockingly bad Star Beast, the sort of like really boring slash very much meh, uh, Wild Blue Yonder, the okay at points, but really, really stupid in the end, uh, giggle, and then this kind of really sort of average at best Church on Ruby Rose. So, yeah, and it wasn't going well towards the end of Capaldi and throughout jo uh, Jodie Whittaker's era. So I think it's on its way out, unfortunately. One of the greatest television shows of all time to come out of this country, come out of Britain, uh, might be coming to an end at some point. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. So, yeah, disappointingly average. Um, but if you like that sort of thing, go and watch it. <laughs> uh, cool. Right, I think I'm going to leave it there. Thank you very much for listening. If you are listening, I probably only get like 10 views from this. But yeah, um, I will speak to you again soon. I don't know what I'm going to be doing next for reviewing things. I'm hoping to start, as I've mentioned a few times now, I'm hoping to start a new show on the channel uh, in the new year. If not next week, but the week after. Um, and yeah, we'll see how we go from there. But yeah, like and subscribe and I will speak to you again soon. Take care and stay safe.